<coughs> so today we shall discuss Savarani's problems and of of all the problems I had thought out, uh, the first one will be uh, the point that was raised yesterday. Why? So it's sort of a quiz. So this quiz. Why are certain state functions state functions useful? Not all. So, so the point is this: that you you can really uh, form many state functions, but all of them are not useful. And then why? Why are certain state functions useful? Not all. Okay. So so let us. Try to get the answer. So useful versus <laughs> what I say is that useless state function. Okay. So the point is this: that if you combine the first law and the second law, so this I actually uh, this I took up yesterday also. So this is the first law part, and this less equal to part is the second law portion. So if you couple these two, you get this equation. So this is the basic equation that is a combination of the first and the second law. Okay. So now I take two functions. One is G, which is normal G, gives potential. The other is G1, which has a H plus. Okay. So here it is the standard definition. It's a non-standard definition. G1 is also a state function. But as we shall see, that it is it is a sort of an useless state function. So why? Because you now take dg. Okay. So d of h minus cs h is u plus pv minus cs. So this gives you du plus pdv plus vdp minus cds minus s. Okay. And now you you try to use this inequality. Okay. So here you have a du. So this becomes less equal to. Okay, so now you see that this TDS, TDS part will cancel with this minus TDS. This minus PDV will cancel with this plus PDV. So you will be left with this GDP minus SDT and minus DW non-mechanical power. Okay, so that's why we say suppressing this term. This is normally not important because this is non-mechanical. Suppressing this term, we normally say that G is a function, two variable function, temperature and pressure. Right? So there is no problem up to this point. Now let us consider G1. So now we put D G1. So G1 is defined by this with a plus sign. So D G1 is, so here instead of a minus CS, you will have a plus CS. So naturally, when you differentiate, you will have plus CS plus S. Now, the, for this du, you put this inequality. Okay, so you get what you see now that this TDS part uh, is is not getting cancelled. It becomes twice TDS. Okay, so here we have a plus TDS. Here we have a plus TDS. So it is twice TDS plus SDT. SDT from this plus VDP, and this P PDV term will only cancel. So you have. Three terms along with this minus non-mechanical part. So you see now G one becomes an, a function of S T and P. So it becomes a three variable function, and you can see that to make G one D G one is less than zero or equal to zero, what you need to do is that you need to impose certain restrictions. One is that there should be no non-mechanical work there. The pressure should be uh, zero. The pressure change there should be, it has to be isobaric. It has to be isothermal to make this point zero. But along with that, here actually these two, these three conditions would have sufficed to make this dg equal to zero or less than zero, depending on whether a process is spontaneous or not. But here you have the additional condition that you have the entropy change should also vanish. So. So it becomes a three variable function, which is normally not useful. So that's why instead of a plus sign here, we take a minus sign. Okay. So 
So we want all our state functions to be a two variable functions, uh, two variable function a, 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 as, as I emphasized yesterday. So useful state functions are those where natural variables are two for a pure single phase system. Because if this is an impure, that means not a single phase system, then you will have that uh, number of moles of each component. So a mu i dni type of term will be there in each. Okay. So that, that's written there. Else you need also to incorporate this uh, number of moles for each component. And for phases, you have alpha also at the top. <coughs> now the second question is, there are a number of variables. PVT are normal natural variables, as we find, as we use in kinetic theory also. This internal energy, enthalpy and entropy, they can't, they, it, it comes from uh, first law, it comes from second law. This is, again, from first law, it's a derived quantity. But why of all these, only PV and PS? You see that you have, in, in each case, the H minus Ts, for example, if you had A, A equal to U minus Ts, okay, H is U plus PV. So why PV and Ts only? This is because we are uh, working in what we call an energy representation. So th there are two types of representations. So one, one is working in the energy representation, the other is in the entropy representation, okay? So we, since we are in the energy representation, so all of uh, these things are in terms of energies, like this internal energy, this is enthalpy, this is also an energy. This entropy is not energy, but Ts is an energy. So PV and Ts, because they have the right dimension of energy. And there is also, you know, that an intensive extensive combination is there, because the overall function is normally extensive. Okay. So to make it in intensive, any property, you, you make a, say, uh, you, you uh, talk about some molar Gibbs potential, molar, uh, so something, uh, if you use molar, so then it becomes intensive. So PV and TS of all these, any arbitrary multiplication of one with other will not uh, yield any state function because you have to respect this energy representation and you have to respect the extensive character of the overall thing. It should not be twice extensive. Okay. So T is intensive, S is extensive. So that's why the whole thing is extensive. So here also the same thing. So you have basically the four the extra state functions which uh, do not have any physical uh, interpretation, ready physical interpretation unless you go over to statistical thermodynamics and all of them contain a <coughs> non-mechanical part and there are two variables. Okay, so here, if the process uh, uh, is such that it does not change the entropy, this part is zero. There is no change in volume, this is zero. Here also the same thing, no change in entropy, this part is zero. No change in pressure, this term is zero. Here you see that no change in temperature, this term is zero, no change in volume, this term is zero. And here, no change in temperature gives the system zero and no change in pressure. So temperature and pressure are the two things that we normally we can control. Okay. So that's why DG is more popular than the others. Okay. So for example, I, and I consider an isothermal reversible process with no non-mechanical work. So you take the difference of, since it is isothermal, so same temperature is there, pressure is different. So this will be V into P2 minus P1 for condensed pressure. Because this is VDP minus SDT, SDT term vanishes, there is no non-mechanical. So naturally you have this SDT term a v, VDP term, so V into P2 minus P1 for condensed phases, because they, otherwise you, you would have an integral for delta G, okay? But for condensed phases, for slight, for more or less one or few atmosphere uh, pressure uh, changes, this molar volume does not change, so naturally the total volume does not change appreciably, so V comes out. Consider this, this thing, D of G minus A, okay? 
d of g minus a so g minus a you see that certain terms will cancel and you will be left with it is d of pv because g is h minus t s a is u minus t s h is u plus pv so naturally this is d of pv so delta g minus delta a becomes delta of pv right so if you have an isothermal process reversible and you work with an ideal gas reversible because then this equality will hold and you take an ideal gas so delta of pv becomes zero so naturally delta g becomes equal to delta a so that's another very useful relation now you consider a process with a constant temperature and volume non mechanical work is delta a maximum non mechanical work you see the constant temperature and volume so da is less equal to minus dw so if you integrate so delta a becomes minus w and that is the maximum possible non mechanical work and this is similar with the constant temperature pressure case for the free energy so that's why it is called free this gibbs free energy and this is helmholtz free energy why why is it called free because that gives an estimate of the maximum amount of non mechanical work available so that's why they are free energy and there is another interesting relation that for isothermal reversible process with no non mechanical work so you you see that in most of the cases we choose this condition delta a is minus the work mechanical work this is the mechanical work this is not the non mechanical work okay because isothermal reversible isothermal so this term vanishes okay this term is zero because no non mechanical so da and reversible so da becomes equal to minus Minus PDV. If you integrate, so delta A becomes integral of minus PDV. PDV term integral is the work maximum work possible. So it is equal to minus of maximum. So that's why A is sometimes called also the work function. It is called the work function. So this is the reason. Now basically we have two important processes. One is reversible. Uh, is reversible isothermal the other is reversible adiabatic irreversible there are so many different paths that that you you may not uh, consider uh, irreversible processes as basic processes in the sense that all practical processes are irre irreversible no doubt but irrever irreversible process can go along many channels but for reversible process we have a fixed channel so that's why we take these things as reversible So reversible isothermal, reversible adiabatic. These two are basic processes in Carnot cycle also. Okay, and the simplest system is the ideal gas. So ideal gas satisfies PV equal to energy, and if it is reversible adiabatic, you know that PV to the gamma is equal to constant. Gamma is CP by CV, which is a, a well-known thing, uh, starting from say class twelve or undergraduate uh, physics and chemistry classes. so any transition in pv diagram can be seen as some combination of these two processes so for ideal gas at least you can always have a physical idea okay so reversible isothermal versus <coughs> irreversible isothermal this one we have talked about uh, earlier so what are the different thing so only w and q terms differ for reversible w is maximum so naturally q is maximum for irreversible w is less than the maximum amount and q is naturally less than the maximum uh, maximum amount of it that is given to the system but any change of state functions remain same because from reversible isothermal uh, if you want to go want to go from a point to point b then you can go reversibly you can go irreversibly but the state functions they depend on the state they depend on the state of b minus the state of a so that is the difference and since it is a thermodynamic property it, it doesn't depend on any path so if you wish to go reversibly or irreversibly the thing remains same but it is always better advisable to go go through the reversible path because you can your calculations becomes uh, much 
easier. Okay. So, for example, for example, suppose we take uh, n moles of an ideal gas. We like to calculate delta S for uh, any uh, isothermal process, be it reversible or irreversible. The points are given, initial and final points. So naturally, it will be n r ln v2 by v1. Because you, you see that there was a T when you consider the Q. And Q by T is delta S. DQ by T, DQ reversal by T is DS. And Q, overall Q by T is delta S. Uh, so, so there is a division by temperature, isothermal conditions where temperature is constant and it cancel out. So naturally you are left with nr ln v2 by v1. v2 is the volume of the final state, v1 is the volume of the initial state. And delta u is zero because isothermal process and ideal gas, you have delta u equal to zero. Delta h is zero because delta of PV is zero. Delta u is zero, delta h is zero. Okay. Now, ah. now if you calculate delta g, delta g is dg, we, we know it, it is vdg minus sdt. The ASDT term cancels because uh, it gives a zero contribution because the process is isothermal. So it is integral of VDP, integral of 1 to 2 VDP. But VDP plus PDV becomes equal to uh, NRDT, but DT is again zero because it's isothermal. So VDP is minus PDV. So it is 1 to 2 minus integral PDV. This is the minus of what? Reversible work that, is, that you can get. So minus of nr tl and v2 by v1, the same as u. Okay. So you see that without considering whether the path is reversible or irreversible, for isothermal processes, depending on only on the initial state and the final state, not on the path, you can calculate the thermodynamic property. And delta A is delta G, as we just discussed a few minutes back, uh, because isothermal reversible ideal gas and uh, without any non-mechanical work, these two are same. Okay. But complication will arise in case of a reversible adaver versus an irreversible adaver. So this requires a closer uh, scrutiny. So all calculations will be done, be they state functions or not. Okay, because here the final states are different. As I explained yesterday, probably it was clear, but I shall again repeat today that from point A to point B, if you go via a reversible adaver, you, you really go to point B. Through an irreversible adaver, you will not go to point B. You will go at, at a, some higher pressure and temperature because that point B now refers to a non-equilibrium state, as I explained yesterday. Okay. So, <clears throat> let us see. Yes, so this, this is the figure that I used yesterday. From A to point B, this is the reversible adiabatic path, and for which you can calculate all the changes, required changes, but if you choose to go irreversibly to the point B, the first important aspect is that you, you will not really reach point B. You will reach temporarily, but instantaneously it will go over to point C. Okay? And C is the stable equilibrium point, B is a non-equilibrium point. So naturally, any calculation you do on the basis of this AB will not be valid for an irreversible uh, adiabatic process that goes from A, really, but uh, that finishes at C, at point C. So, so, so here, at a, in the adiabatic process, there is a trick. So this trick, we have to understand in a bit more detail. Okay. And you see from here also, is this point that points below B along the line CB cannot be connected to A by any adapter. You can, you can see this clearly. 
step from A to B, you, you go reversibly. You reversibly go to point B, B is non-equilibrium, but then you go up and you finally settle at point C. But it is clear that below point B, there are infinite number of points along this line. These lines cannot be connected from A. Okay, so 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 there there, there actually an infinite number of points below B along the line CB, which cannot be connected to A via any adiabatic path. Because C is now connectable to A via the, uh, the irreversible adiabatic path. But any point below B cannot be connected because you cannot do more work in the irreversible. Okay? So since you cannot do more work at the expense of more internal energy, you cannot reduce the temperature more or the pressure more because the volume is fixed. Right. So this is another realization of Kara Theoretics principle, uh, which was stated very generally, but here in the context of an ideal gas, but you can you can get the essence of it. That there are really certain points which ca cannot be connected adiabatically uh, with respect to a given point. Now, in studying this equivalent reversible path idea, uh, we, we say that the system states are given by PVT. Okay? So, 1, 1, 1 means pressure is 1, volume is 1, temperature is 1. So, this is a shorthand notation. Okay? PVT like XYZ. So, so, the first one refers to pressure, the second one to volume, the third one to temperature. Now, you are given a problem like this. One mole of an ideal gas changes its state from 111 to 1 fourth to half. Find delta U delta S. So, how do you proceed? So, the point is this, that it is not isothermal. First of all, you see the temperature differs. The temperature is lowered. So, naturally, there has to be some kind of adiabatic expansion. Okay. Uh, otherwise, temperature cannot be lowered. Uh, now, one particular adiabat cannot do the thing because you, you cannot maintain this PV to the power gamma is constant. You cannot maintain that with these two uh, sets of uh, data. So, you have to assume that from 111, is, it goes to some, some arbitrary pressure, some arbitrary volume, and temperature remains on. So, it's an isothermal reversible. So that x into v equal to 1 into 1. So PV is constant. Okay. 1 into 1 is 1. So PV is constant means it, it obeys Boyle's law. It's a reversible isotherm. So you go to an unknown pressure and volume. So try to find this unknown pressure and volume. And then from xv1, you go to the final state. And this, as I said, that via a reversible adiabat which uh, has to be an expansion because the temperature reduces. And here you have the working relation that pressure into volume to the power gamma is constant. So, so what is here? X V to the gamma is equal to here it is one fourth into two to the power gamma. So two to the power gamma by four. And this is an ideal gas. So C V is three <coughs> by two R and gamma is five by three as we know. So you now simplify. X D is one, and this is this is one relation. This is another relation. Gamma is known. X and V are two unknowns. You have two equations, so you can easily solve. So you, you, when you simplify, you get that V to the two third is to the minus one. So V equal to two to the minus half. Okay, and hence P has to be equal to two to the half because P V is equal to one. This P V intermediate point pressure volume. If we multiply, we should get 1. Yes, PV, equal, PV by T is constant everywhere, but PV is constant for the isothermal point. So, so that's how you just, you have this, this very tiny problem, but now uh, you see that the purpose of using the equivalent reversible path so you cannot uh, 
you cannot calculate the changes by considering straight from this uh, point to going over to this point straight. You cannot cannot do anything. So what you do is that you choose two reversible paths. One is isothermal, the other is adiabatic. Okay. So now it looks like this. Suppose I try to go from A to B. So that was my initial M, 1, 1, 1 to that 1, 4, 2, half or so on. So from A, point A, I go up to the point C, which is via a reversible isotherm. I go along the red line to the point C. Then I come back along the blue line to the point C. So these two, this red line and the blue line, this is a reversible isotherm, this is a reversible adiabat. I start from point A and I end up at point B. So, so this is basically, you see that from A to the point C, you have a higher pressure and a lower volume. You see that your mathematics is also like that. So you have a higher pressure because P is root 2. Initially, you have P equal to 1. So root 2 is 1.4. So it is greater than 1. And volume naturally will be less than one. So from initial volume, you go to a lower volume. So that means you have an isothermal compression. And then you have a, a, an adiabatic expansion. Right. So you now identify the figure with what we did in uh, the numeric. Okay. From point A, we go up. We reduce the volume, increase the pressure, reach a point C. From point C, we now go down, increase the volume, and go up to point B to reduce the temperature as well. So this is the reverse. Okay. So this was the problem. So for path A to C, reversible isotherm, delta U is 0, this we know. And for path C to B, reversible adiabat, delta U is N C V uh, delta T, but N is 1, 1 mole of uh, an ideal gas. So it is 3 R by 2, this is C V, and delta T is half minus 1, because the final uh, thing is half, and this is 1. So along the reversal path, uh, isothermal path, this temperature remains 1. So net delta U will be minus 3 R by 4. Okay. I am not using any value of R, so that uh, depends uh, as usual. Uh, it depends on the choice of pressure, volume. I, I, I never told that P is in atmosphere, volume is, is in liter and so on. So it depends. So, so you have to put the appropriate value of R. That's not important. So, so temperature is lowered at the cost of U. Net delta U is negative because you have done more work in the adiabatic path and that is at the cost of internal energy. So naturally internal energy decreases. Okay. Now, for path A to C, reversible isotherm, delta S is known. Delta S, we, we talked about it earlier. N R N is 1. So, N R L N V2 by V1. So, R L N 2 to the minus half. So, V2 by V1 is 1. And V2 is 2 to the uh, minus half. As we just, so, V is 2 to the minus half. So, 2 to the minus half. Okay. So, and this is 1. So, so delta S is this, and for path C to B, this is the reversible adiabat, so naturally delta S is zero. So net delta S is, so from here you have a minus of R ln 2. So isothermal compression, that reduces S, because entropy does not change along the adiabatic path. It does not change. So it is here that this compression is actually makes the entropy change negative. Okay. So had it been an expansion, isothermal expansion, the entropy change would have been positive. Okay. So why a negative sign here? So these things are explained. Now, uh, this is another problem. This is a more interesting problem. This again refers to a free expansion process that we discussed in the uh, yesterday's class. So, one mole of an ideal gas undergoes a free expansion to three times the initial value. Okay? So, 
that means the, there was a piston uh, uh, or partition which is uh, lifted and suddenly the gas expands and the partition is put immediately afterward at three times the initial value. Okay, find delta u, delta s. Simple problem, but here you have again the equivalent reversal for the idea uh, you have to apply. So suppose some PVT to it goes to some arbitrary pressure, V becomes 3V, 3 times the volume. Okay. And this T becomes some Y. So find X and Y first. W equal to 0 as the opposing pressure is 0. So this is the character of free F contract. And Q is 0. The process is so sudden that it cannot take up any heat. So the uh, it's a derivative. So by first law delta U is 0. Now U is function of temperature only for ideal gas. So Y equal to T. So temperature remains same. So if you start from temperature T, it does not go to T1 or T2. It, it remains at T. Hence X becomes equal to P by 3 because PV is constant. So X is, if this increases 3 times, it will reduce 3 times. So pressure is initial pressure by 3, volume is initial volume into so final state is then on the reversible isothermal line as we showed yesterday. Hence delta S becomes equal to NRLN V2 by V1. So it is uh, 1 mole. So RLN 3. See the figure. So this is the figure that I showed also yesterday. That it goes from here against the zero pressure. It, it is expanded, allowed to expand. It, it lands at point B, but it does not stay there because that is a non-equilibrium point. So immediately it goes over to the equilibrium point C. Okay. So you really go from A to C. And now A to C, you can connect it via reversible isotherm. And you can calculate all the necessary thermodynamic properties that, that are given there in your problem. So, so that is very important. So now we come to the most difficult case. This is, again, the problem is very simple. And as I said, that any intricacy uh, can be resolved by taking the simplest model also. So one mole ideal gas, but it is initially at 5 atmosphere, 300 Kelvin expanded adiabatically against one atmosphere. So when we say that it is against some given pressure, so that means I am doing it irreversible to double the volume. Find delta U delta U. Very simple-minded uh, problem, but you see the, uh, the way in which it is done or it has to be done. So our point is get the final temperature first. So that is very important. So it is from 300 Kelvin, since it is expanded adiabatically, the so temperature will reduce. So you first find the final temperature. How do we find it? Here Q is 0. Q is 0 when something is done adiabatically, irrespective of whether it is done reversibly or irreversibly. Q is always 0. So delta U becomes equal to minus W. So that is the first law. Delta U becomes equal to minus W. Delta U is CV delta T. One mole. So naturally CV delta T. And W is, is the <coughs> opposing pressure into change in volume. Change in volume is 2V minus V because double the volume. Okay. So it is minus V. The CV delta T is minus V. So CV is uh, CV is what? CV is 3 by 2 R and what is delta T? Delta T we have to find out and here you get a V. So 3 R by 2 delta T is minus 60 R because the volume turns out to be minus so delta T is minus 40K. So T2 is the final temperature is 260K. Okay. Yeah. 
this is basically pv equal to nrt you apply that so that is valid always uh, n is 1 so g becomes equal to minus 60 r so you you does get a delta u which is minus 60 r delta u is simulated and delta h is delta u plus delta of pv so minus 60 r plus delta of pv is p2 v2 minus p1 v1 so p2 v2 we know that's rt2 and p1 v1 is rt1 so plus r into t2 minus t1 but t2 is less so naturally it will be it will be more negative so minus 40 because this delta t is uh, this is 260, this was 300, so the difference is 40, so naturally it will be minus 100 R. So that's how you get delta U and delta H. So the idea of doing an adiabatic expansion, it is not reversible, irreversibly, is to first calculate the final temperature. So that is one. Now the irreversible adiabatic versus reversible adiabatic. So here, this part of the question was there earlier, but this is the extra part. Where would the corresponding reversible adiabatic expansion stand? So we follow the change. Okay, 5G300 to X to V V2. Here too, you have Q equal to zero because this is adiabatic. So delta U is minus W. But now you use P V to the gamma is constant. This you, you did not use in the earlier operation. Okay. So in the reversible case, you have this X, the final pressure as 1.57. This is the reversible case. But in the earlier case, you have a P2. Although you expanded it against one atmosphere, the final pressure does not reside at one atmosphere. It will remain at 2.167. So this atmosphere finally at the equilibrium point. Okay. So you see that the final pressure or the final, that means equivalently the final temperature because volume is made twice. So the final pressure or the final temperature, they are more in the irreversible case. So in the reversible case, you, you get the, the lowest possible temperature. Uh, in the reversible adiabatic case for a given increase in the volume. Okay. So this is one note that I just said. Again, referring to a transition from non-equilibrium to equilibrium state that we were at a higher temperature when volume is free. So everything is covered. So, so this was again yesterday's picture. This irreversible work, so the so the thing goes up. So you see that the final pressure in the reversible case is lower. So naturally, the final temperature is lower than the final uh, pressure or temperature in the irreversible case, which we, we have just uh, we have just witnessed. Okay. So that's it. Uh, 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 this this uh, also we. That we have discussed. Now, uh, uh, there is a problem. Why is delta S equal to zero for a reversible adiabatic process, but is non zero for an irreversible adiabatic process? Can it be explained physically? So, this is a problem that uh, bothers us a lot. Okay, I think that I shall take two or three minutes of gap. Okay, so I need it. Uh, so, so I can uh, make myself more refreshed. So, so please wait for uh, two to three minutes. Thank you. Any adiabatic process, Q is zero, but delta S is zero only for a reversible adiabatic. It is basically non-zero for an irreversible adiabatic. Okay, so let us try to understand physically why does it happen. You see very carefully 
we use again the equivalent reversal for IDR. Okay. So A to D, a reversal adiver, delta is equal to zero. A to D, it's the standard blue curve reversal adiver. A to B is an irreversible adiver. A to point B, because it, uh, when, whenever you do, whenever you try to go from A to D via reversible adiver, but you go irreversibly, you do basically less work. So naturally, as we have seen, the temperature increases, the pressure will also increase, so it stands at B. So now the idea is to draw a reversible adiver to B that actually crosses the point, that actually crosses the isotherm at some point. So the idea is this, that you consider reversible paths A to C and then C to B. So you go from A to C and then from C to this B, it's a reversible adiver. So for this re reversible adiver, there is no entropy change, but when you go from A to C, this is an isothermal path. And because this is an isothermal path and isothermal expansion, delta S basically increases. So it is A to C that accounts for delta S greater than zero. Although you carried out everything um, in an adiabatic manner, but irreversibly. So e the point is that irreversibly from A to D, you cannot go you go to a point somewhat above the point D along this line. So from this intersection point, you draw, draw an adiabatic curve. Okay? And simultaneously from A, you draw a reversible isothermal curve. They will meet at point C. So the idea is that you go from A to C via a reversible isotherm for which the entropy change is positive increases and then from C to this point B, you follow a reversible adiver. So these are our constructs. These were not there in the problem. The problem was that you go from A irreversibly to a point B. But then through this equivalent reversal path idea, you get clearly the notion why delta S increases because of this expansion, isothermal expansion part. That's why it is okay. Now consider certain other things like isobars and isocores. Okay. An isobaric change means same pressure from B to A. So this is an isobaric change. An isochoric change, for example, the same volume from C to A. So this is an isobaric change. These two are drawn on the same plot. <coughs> But B to A is an isobaric, the pressure is constant, and A to C or C to A, this is an isochoric change because the volume remains constant. So th these are the names. Now, you note another thing. So what I now wish to emphasize is that both are irreversible unless further conditions are imposed. So these isobaric changes or isochoric changes, both are irreversible. Why? So go from C to B or C or B to D. C or B to the point D. You go along a, along the adiabatic line. The adiabatic line is blue always. And then come back to A. So we come back to A via the isothermal line. So this is how we go from say B to A, we go along this line and then, then along this reversible line. So this is again the equivalent reversible uh, path idea using. Uh, and for isochoric change from C via the adiabatic path, you go to D and then via the isothermal path, you come back to A. Now the point is if B to A or C to A is reversible, okay, B to A or C to A is reversible, the opposite process will also be reversible. So if any one of these turns out to be irreversible, then the opposite process will also be irreversible. Now you note that B2A might be quasi-static. B2A might be quasi-static because B2A is the area under this curve. So this area, as we said, that quasi-static processes 
mean basically integration as the limit of a sum. So you do infinitesimal changes and you proceed from B to A. This you can do. But here from C to A, there is no work. No work is done because there is no volume change. Okay. So you do not really have any area here. Hmm. So, so it is it is not really true that all quasi-static processes are reversible because as we said that these two processes are irreversible. Why I am coming to that? But you notice that they may not, there may be processes which, which can be carried out quasi-statically, but which are not really reversible. Now why? Now consider this isobaric chain, B2A. Why irreversible? Because we know that reversible work is the maximum possible work. So any reversible work is greater than irreversible work. Okay? So from B to A, if we go, so from B we go adiabatically, we go along the reversible adiabatic line to D, we go along the reversible isothermal line. So how much is our how much is our work? So that means how much is the area under the curve? So from B to D, the area under the curve is this blue, blue thing. And from D to A, the area under the curve is including this blue, these are red lines, these are red lines, this is also red lines, so this red thing. Okay, so up to this point. And what is the normal work if you carry out B to A transformation straighter? So that means you go, you get only this rectangle. Now, if you take the difference, you see that by going reversibly, you are actually gaining some area. So this area is extra. So naturally, this is the extra work. And since this is the extra work, and since it is already said that reversible work is greater than irreversible work, so this process must be irreversible because by going through an equivalent reversible path, you gain in work, it is the extra work. So that's why this process is irreversible. Now, for an isocode, similarly, you go from B to A. So, you go from B to this point D, then from D to A, and you just subtract the areas. Okay. So, this is a compression. So, naturally, it will have the work which is negative. This is an expansion. So, the work is positive. So, after cancellation, this part of the work, this part of the area actually defines the work that remains. But from B to A, if you go straight away, you, you uh, actually do zero work because there is no change in volume. So delta V is zero. So PDV work is zero. So here W irreversible is zero and which is less than W reversible because this is W reversible. Right. So that's how you can show that isochoric and isobaric changes are basically irreversible processes. Till then, <laughs> the uh, uh, good point about these two isovers and isocodes are this that for isover, you can still calculate delta S very easily, dq reversible by T, but dq is du plus PDV. Okay? But this dq reversible is not necessary because here dq is du plus pdb, but you can add a vdp term because it is isobar, so pressure does not change. So this term you can add, and whenever you, you add this term, it becomes dh. So you see that integral of a to b, dq, for dq reversible, you put dh, okay? so dh by t, and it is basically cpl and t2 by t1, or tv by t2. Or for temperature, you place the volume because it is isobar, so, volume and temperature is there, proportional. Okay. So, that's how you can avoid the uh, equivalent reversible path idea in, in entropy calculations for isobaric processes. And that is similar with the isoporic process. So, people might think that 
these two processes are basically reversal, but they are really not. Because here also in the isophore case, delta S is again A to B DQ reversal by T and DQ here is DU plus PDV. And for the isophore, there is no change in volume. So basically, DQ, DU, so it becomes a state function. So DQ reversal you need not put. So naturally you can integrate, right? DU by and thus it gives you severe and uh, TV by T or severe and TV by TF because here the volume is kept constant. Like here, the pressure was kept constant. So temperature is proportional to the volume. Here, pressure, uh, the volume is kept constant. So temperature is proportional to the pressure. Fine. Delta G and delta A. Okay. So you see that in many of the examples that we calculate, uh, we, we have used, we calculated delta S, delta U, delta H, and so on. Uh, uh, less about, we talked about delta G or delta A, and we, we cannot talk about delta G and delta A for any transformation that is not isothermal. It is very important. Okay. Therefore, for reversible adiabatic processes, we do not know their values. Right. So whenever you couple, uh, a particular uh, irreversible change by a reversible adiabate, reversible isotherm. For isotherm part, you can calculate delta G or delta A, but for the adiabatic part, you cannot. Okay. So, <clears throat> basically, then the contribution is that no process should exist with delta U equal to zero, delta S equal to zero, and delta H equal to zero. In the PV diagram, you cannot have two points which are connected their two points are distinctly different, but you try uh, uh, many processes, uh, reversal, equivalent reversal paths and so on, but you cannot find that delta U is zero, delta S is zero, and also delta H is zero. Because these points cannot be characterized. How, how do you say that there are two, there are two different points, two different states of the same, same system, the system transforms from one state to another. It is not possible. Ah. So now we the phase transition. What is delta S? So DS is DQ reversible by T. So this is true for any process at constant temperature and pressure, like a phase transition process. And as we have just seen, that constant temperature and since the pressure is constant, DQ reversible is dH. So delta S is delta H by T. So it is basically delta S is integral of this. So and temperature is also constant. So it is L by T. L is the latent heat. Okay. T is the transition temperature. So this is normally the uh, a, a form of just uh, a prelude to the Clapeyron equation. So compute delta S for the conversion of five gram of water at three seventy three Kelvin to steam. So it is just what what we require is the specific heat. So the mass of the uh, water, this is the specific heat, and this is the temperature. The mass into specific heat, the latent heat, gives you the total latent heat and by temperature. So it is very easy to see. This is the computation. Fine. More about the phase transition process. So, more about this. Suppose there are two phases, phase alpha and phase beta. You take one mole. So, dg is zero because it occurs at constant temperature and pressure. So dg is zero. There is no non-mechanical work, so naturally. And it is reversible, so dg is zero. So that means mu at mu is the chemical potential. Okay, so for one mole, uh, so this is g basically. So g at alpha phase is equal to g at the beta phase. So that's how dg is zero. Okay. So change the equilibrium temperature and pressure slightly to p plus dt, p plus dt. Then you have the mu alpha Tp plus d mu alpha. This, for this slight change, you have a slight change in, in the chemical potential also. So this is the uh, mu beta at Tp plus a slight change, d mu beta. So this gives you that d mu alpha is d mu beta. Now, what is d mu? Is, this is d bar, basically. Uh, so uh, since we consider one mole, so it is d. So V alpha, VDP minus SDT, and here also VDP minus SDT for the beta phase. This is for the alpha phase. They are equal. So from here you get DPD, which is delta S by delta V. 
So that means delta S is L by T. So naturally, it is L by T into delta. So for example, you consider a fusion process. Usually, delta S is given as say 16 to 20 joule per uh, Kelvin per mole. And delta V is about plus minus 4 cc per mole. It is very small. Uh, this plus or minus because from uh, for fusion process, so uh, for fusion or melting, so from solid phase to liquid phase, water uh, or things, uh, there are certain uh, liquids for which there is an increase in uh, volume in going from the liquid to the solid phase. For others, normally there is a decrease in volume. So delta V can have two kinds of such. So this answer is very simple. This is L by T into delta V. So, so you find that this rapidity turns out to be about plus minus 40 atmosphere per Kelvin. So it is very steep. So if you uh, see a phase diagram, you see that the solid liquid line is very steep. It's almost perpendicular. Okay. So slightly, there is slight tint. Uh, along the left or along the light, uh, right, depending on whether the sign is positive or negative. So, for water, you see an exception. So, that's it. Now, if you now want to calculate delta G for the vaporization of one mole of water at 373, the same problem we did uh, somewhat before. So, what is, if you want to calculate delta G, delta G means G vapor minus G of liquid. So, vaporization process. So, from liquid phase, we are going to the vapor phase. So, it is <coughs> delta H minus T delta S, phase change, constant temperature and pressure, particularly the pressure in, uh, is constant and dS dQ reversal by T and dQ reversal is dH. We already know, no non-mechanical work, pressure is constant. So, dA, dS is equal to dH by T. So, delta S is equal to delta H by T. You put it there, back, delta G. So, delta G becomes 0 as expected. Delta G is 0 for phase transition process. Okay. For a pure substance, delta G is 0 because it comes, it occurs that it is isothermal isobaric. So, dG is VdB minus SDP. So, naturally, dG is 0. So, naturally, delta G is 0. This applies to any phase transformation. It shows how useful is delta G. On the other hand, similar usefulness can be uh, found for delta A. Delta A is A vapor minus A liquid and uh, by definition it is delta U minus T delta S because A's delta T term does not arise because temperature is constant and now dS is the Q reversible by T which is dH, dS is dH by T. So naturally delta S is delta H by T. So delta A is delta U minus T delta S. For delta S you put this so, delta U minus delta H, so minus delta of PV, because delta H is delta U plus delta of PV. And since the pressure is constant, so delta of PV means minus P delta V. So, it is minus W. So, it is the negative of the total work. And this also applies to any phase transformation and it shows the usefulness of delta A. So, delta A is linked with the work, with the negative of work and delta G is 0 for a phase transition. Ah. If you like to calculate this delta A, so what you need is delta V and the pressure. So delta V for this vaporization process, V of vapor, volume of the vapor minus volume of the liquid for one mole, it is RT by P uh, because it's volume of the vapor that matters. So it is RT by P, I assume it is ideal. Our volume of the liquid it is minus 18.8 cc per mole, thus delta A turns to be minus 3.1 kilojoule at normal pressure, atmospheric pressure. Okay. Uh, now a bit of quizzes. In a reversible isothermal process, heat is completely hot for an ideal process. This we know. Now the point is. Does it go against the second law? The second law, loosely speaking, second law states that heat cannot be completely converted into work, but in a reversal isothermal process, we see that heat is completely converted into work. So it does not really go 
Ah, so here is the answer. The process is not cyclic. Heat cannot be completely converted into work in a cyclic process. That was the question. Okay, so cyclic. The term cyclic is not here. It is just a process. Okay, so that's why it does not go against the second. Ah, uh, so this point we discuss. Uh, on a lot of occasions, from a starting state to a targeted final state, you cannot go both irreversibly and reversibly if the process is adiabatic. So, if the process is adiabatic, reversibly, wherever you go, irreversibly, you, you reach a point which is slightly higher in pressure and temperature if the volume change is kept constant. So, this is again a form of the current theory principle. If you go irreversibly, less work is done, but more work at the cost of you in Reversible case, if lower temperature, the more Q equal to zero in both the cases. How does the second law limit the energy conservation idea when an engine works? Now let us see. So conservation means it, it, it comes from the first law. So we take a problem. We take a Carnot, Carnot engine with a source at 200 Kelvin and a sink at 100 Kelvin. Suppose Q1, the heat taken from the source is 10 joule. Okay. Conservation of energy is valid in the sense that Q1 equal to Q2 plus W. So whatever amount of work is it does added to whatever amount of heat is given to the sink that will sum up to the Q1, the total amount of heat taken from the source. So we can have 10 equal to 0, Q1 equal to Q2 plus W, 0 plus 10, 10 equal to 1 plus 9. So Everywhere at the left you have 10 and at the right you can write anything which sum up to, uh, of course both are positive, uh, 1 plus 9 you can have points, okay, 1.5 plus uh, 8.5 or 0 0.5 plus 9.5, whatever. But you see that for this problem you have the source at 200 Kelvin and the sink at 100 Kelvin. So what is the efficiency? Efficiency you can calculate. 1 minus T2 by T1, so 1 minus half, so it is half. So if, if the efficiency is half, efficiency into Q1, so Q1 is 10, so 10 into half is 5. So maximum 5 joule of work you can get. But here you see the 10 joule is converted into work. You, take, you have taken 10 joules from the uh, high temperature reservoir and all of it is converted. This, this actually goes against the definition of the second law. This is a kelvin plaque statement. But 1 plus 9 also goes against it because you cannot have a more efficient engine. So up to this point, so every identity, it loses significance. The conser energy conservation is valid everywhere. Uh, uh, the first law allows all these things, but second law starts allowing things from here. Where this is 5 plus 5, so 5 is maximum amount of work, 5 joule. Or you can do less work by using an irreversible engine. So that heat given to the surroundings or heat given to the sink is more. So second law allows this lower part. Okay. The first law allows the whole. The second law allows only the lower part. So this is again one important difference of the second law or, or uh, what is more general in the second law than the first law. So the next point is uh, why can't an irreversible engine be reversed to get an irreversible pump? So you consider the same problem. So T1 is 200, T2 is 100, Q1 is 10 joule, W is 4 joule, Q2 is 6 joule. So this is allowed. Eta is 0 0.4, so it is less than 0 0.5. This is an irreversible engine. So you calculate delta S of the universe, which is, so heat taken from the source is uh, uh, 10, so it is minus 10 by 200. And given to the surroundings is 6, so 6 by 100. Okay, so it is 1 by 100, because it, it becomes minus 10 by 200 plus 12 by 200. So basically 2 by 200, so it is 1 by 100, it is greater than 0. So irreversible engine is an allowed process because 
delta s universe is greater than zero. If you just reverse it, you will find that delta s of the universe is. If you just reverse it, so that means you take up, you take up six joules from hundred Kelvin uh, sink, and you give ten joules to the two hundred Kelvin source. So delta s universe will be ten by two hundred minus six by hundred. So it is minus one by hundred. It is less than zero. So in this way, it violates second. So that's how. An irreversible engine cannot be reversed. Okay, cannot be reversed. Why can't an irreversible engine be reversed to get an irreversible pump? This is an irreversible pump. This this is the case of a pump or a refrigerator. But it would have been acceptable to take Q one is ten, W is six, Q two is four. So Q two has to be less than five. So Q two is four is Allowed. Uh, let us now check that it is allowed. So delta s of the universe is four joules. So it is minus four by hundred, and ten joules is going to the source. So it is plus ten by two hundred. So it is one by hundred. So it is delta s of the universe is greater than zero. So second law allows it. So this is how you just test and say that whether an engine or a pump is allowed by the second law or not. So now we are towards the end. What is the coefficient of performance phi in a pump, and what is the governing inequality? So I talked about the coefficient of performance in a pump, uh, like this is very much like the engine efficiency. Eta reversible is greater than eta irreversible. This we all know. Similarly, we we can show that phi reversible is greater than phi irreversible. Okay. Now here is the proof. The phi is Q2 by W. So how much heat is taken up from the sink, and for that how much work you have to do? So it is the ratio of that. So it is Q2 by Q1 minus Q. Now you take the acceptable example. Acceptable means the acceptable in the earlier case. So Q1 is 10, W is 6, Q2 is 4. This is the action of a pump. So phi is 4 by 6. Four by six Q two by W. So Q two is four W is six. Four by six two third. So it is irreversible. What is would have been in the case of a reversible? In case of a reversible, we knew that Q one is ten, W is five, Q two is five. Depending on our uh, situation, in our situation we have the source at two hundred and the sink at hundred. So phi reversible would be five. So you see that phi reversible is greater than phi irreversible. So this is very similar to Eta reversible is greater than eta irreversible. So this is about the pump. This is about the engine. This is about the refrigerator. This is about the engine. Ah, so here we we have come almost towards the end. A closed system transforms reversibly to a state. Transforms reversibly to a state for which delta v equal to zero. Is the PV work done equal to zero? It transforms reversibly. It is written there. Okay. So W is integral P dV. But delta v is zero. Okay, so you can think that this integral of p dv is zero, but it is not. This is an isochronic transformation, and use the equivalent reversible path idea because we we have given in the problem that transforms reversibly to a state. Ah, so so we have to be careful. So this is the figure earlier figure. So from b to a, go from b to a. There is no 